What can we do? The next step, of course, would be freeing it. Yeah. What can? What kind of steps can we take? So, yes, exactly. So we are divided schizoid beings. We are Jekyll and Hyde beings. It's the Madonna. <laughs> the Madonna. The first step is to yes, what you just did, which is. Hello, my name is Tobias, and I have sexual issues. You know, I mean, we <laughs> welcome to you know the twelve-step program, right? I mean, the first step is to go. Okay, I'm not perfect. You know, I'm a human. I'm learning. I'm on this planet. It's pretty been a pretty long, amazing, uh, in some sense, very powerful, uh, tragic history on Earth of loss of soul power and atrocities. So the first step is just to go okay, everything's not great, and I have some work to do. Awesome. And then you, can, then you ask. You, you intend, you say, I'm ready for my next step. I am ready for my next step. And if you believe in a big power, a large power, God, then call out to God, your angels, your own higher intelligence, your own wisdom, or just make a decision with your intelligence. I'm ready to learn. And by the way, there's no pressure. If you don't feel ready to do it now... You don't have to, but if you're listening to this or if you're inspired to sort of be curious about it, then part of you does want to awaken and reclaim these parts of yourself. So first part is to realize uh, part of me is awake. I might understand things, but I still have my feelings are scared in my solar plexus. My sexuality is attracted to stuff that I think is wrong whether that's your own judgments or you've been programmed that way, you need to go to that Pandora's box, you know. You need to go open the lid and go, what's in there? Oh, you know. And, mirror, and, mirror, on the wall. I am the most screwed up of them all. <laughs> <laughs> it, hey, and, the truth hurts, but only for a minute. I mean, we get over it. <laughs> that's really true. What you, what you just said. When we get hit with our mirror, mirror reflection of our junk, I just had some clients. Yeah, I, exactly. And we can talk more about that. <laughs> we will pick this up on the other side. Hold that thought right there. We're speaking about sex and love with Tobias Lars, author of Listening to the Sun. Soulcounseling.com is the website. Be right back. Truth Brigade Radio. Welcome back. Welcome back. You're listening to Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Thanks for joining us tonight, talking about sex and love with Tobias Lars, author of Listening to the Sun and creator of Course of Awakening. You can uh, check out those videos at CourseOfAwakening.com. Of course, if you have any questions or comments, don't be shy. If, if we can talk about it, you can too. Bye. Five one two eight seven nine three eight zero five. All right, Tobias, if you would just pick up uh, where we left off before the break. <laughs> you're asking me <laughs> to have a. You're asking me to have a memory. To, no, no. <laughs> we're, we're too much in the now to to do anything like that. So whatever feels good right now, let's do it. <laughs> so yes, what what. Uh, um, <laughs> What I felt during the break was, and again, forgiveness. So how do we open our personal sexual energy again? How do we get healthy with it is what you were asking. Yeah. So one, first, first step, realize, okay, I am disconnected. I am schizoid. I am Jekyll and Hyde, you know. And, and fine. So what? Okay, it's not the end of the world, but it could be, unless we all heal ourselves, it very well could be the end of the world. And so let's start healing ourselves. Yeah. And, um, or at least for your world. Yeah. And so we have total choice, but the, the schizoidness in our sex shows up in the Madonna whore complex, or women who, you know, this is good husband material, he's a good provider, and he's a really nice guy, but mm -hmm. I really don't want to have that much sex with him, just sort of when I have to. And, and that and that becomes your dad, you know, your your children's father. So we have that schizoid thing between hey, this you know, really fun, and I'm really turned on, lustful, full on, really powerful sex. You know, that just very powerful orgasms versus duty orgasms. You know, let's be honest. And that's been that way a long time for women and men. So that schizoidness uh, is a loss of power because orgasms are an incredible 
power. It is magnetic vibration from the woman. It is like, imagine um, ripples coming out from the center of a galaxy in circles or in actual spheres just pumping electromagnetic storms of energy around a sun or a galactic center. That's what a magnetic orgasm is for women, literally. Mm-hmm. And and for men, it is the it's similar. We're both. We're both the male and the female. And often, if a lot of us, if we tell the truth, when we've had really unbelievable sex, and don't feel bad if this doesn't happen to you, don't worry, it will at some point, where you actually forget who's who. You can forget and, or start feeling, my God, I'm feeling like the woman or I'm feeling like the man. This is a common thing that happens for people when they start opening this up tantrically. And I hate, you know, just being in love and doing it, that's the best way, you know. Anytime mm-hmm. you start having rules about it, the little it's like bringing in some guy with a notebook taking rules. It really kills the whole moment, you know what I mean? So <laughs> you, you, that's why the, we follow the natural impulse. If we can do that more and more and trust it, Trust it, trust it. Women have certainly, the feminine has been really guilty of sort of manipulating sexual energy for control. And the men have been guilty of doing it as well. Not about taking sides, but if if the feminine could look at, can I actually let my sex be free? No strings attached. And this doesn't mean promiscuity, it doesn't mean running around, it means doing what actually feels good to you. Without that little, yeah, this feels good, but I'm also at the same time over here in my left brain or, you know, in my other part of my consciousness going, yes, I'm doing this with a little bit of manipulation. Let's tell some truth. Lots of women have done this a lot, a lot, a lot, a lot. And that has caused icky, sticky string of Mm -hmm. manipulation. So if we can return to innocent sex, innocent lust, feel that one, innocent Effing, all right? And and if you can do that, then <laughs> that will dissolve all of it. Now, that might be a tall order right off the bat. So you start right where you're at. You get honest with, this turns me on. I'm attracted to that person. Get real about it. Don't pretend you're not. Why? Okay, what do I like? Am I to explore that with them? Do it. If you can't handle it, stop it and go, I can't be with you anymore. Forgive yourself, forgive yourself, forgive yourself. These are big issues. There was a big trauma. I was The thing I mentioned about the Roman police, I'll just give you as an example. The Roman secret police used to use these horrible special knives on women and, and would literally tear their G-spot while they were... They would mm-hmm. mix sexual excitement with torture. Mm-hmm. And if you look, look around, there's still a lot of that reverberating on the earth. We mix pain and sex. And mm-hmm. just saying we shouldn't do that won't heal it. You have to actually go in it and face it, confront it, not judge it, heal it, forgive everyone involved, including yourself, and then claim that power back to yourself. Retrieve that soul dungeon. It's interesting that a lot of the S&M goes on in dungeons, right? Hmm. And so there's soul dungeons for pieces of our souls that are still there, stuck like ghosts. What ghosts are, ghosts are a piece of a soul that broke off. You go to Gettysburg and you can go see some souls, pieces, that broke off of 17 and 18 and 19-year-old young boys at that battle that endured horrible pain, and they're stuck on a loop. That soul is like a, that soul fragment is loop. That's a ghost. It, it marches the same thing every night. It does the same thing every night for eternity. That's hell. Now, pe- pe- pieces of ourselves, we need, we need to go back in and release them. I hear the break. Yeah, wow. Very powerful, Tobias. Um, you know, I just want to mention again, if you have not read Listening to the Sun, go to soulcounseling.com right now to get your copy. And uh, anyways, we're going to be back three minutes after this break. At the top of the hour, Tobias Lars talking about sex and love. Have any questions? Don't be shy. 512-879-3800. Zero five. Stay tuned. 
All right, welcome back. You're listening to Truth Brigade on AmericanFreedomRadio.com. Tobias, we have a real short segment here, but there is a little debate going on in a text chat about uh, lust versus love, um, physical sex versus spiritual and, and desire. Um, I mean, maybe we can start by talking about the difference between lust and love. Right. And when we become whole again, those definitions disappear. Lust and love will merge. And this is in our own consciousness. We've divided two. There's nothing particularly wrong with that. We can explore lust versus love if we want to. But in the original plan, the lust and the love are holding hands and they are combined. But if you well, of do... course it would be combined, but, you know, some of the other comments in the chat were sex is physical gratification. And, mm-hmm. you know, I, I understand that a lot of people just do it for that, and that's okay. But yeah. isn't sex so much more than just a, a physical act? Sex is a royal highway to complete detonation of every cell in your whole body and turning yourself back into pure light. Sex is the creative force. It is the only place, really, where, quote, the cauldron of eruptive, orgasmic, creative energy orgasms through us still, even though, sad to say, many people's sex drives are dying, therefore Viagra, Cialis, etc., because we have so shut off the life force. But yeah, we've divided the two. And um, to include the body, we've made enemies of the body. We treat the body as separate from our spirit. This is part of the misunderstanding. It really is just all one energetic soup. All your cells are is condensed energy, just like you take water vapor or steam and you condense it to ice. Your body, you could say, is the ice. It feels semi-solid. The steam is your spirit. You know, uh, there's consciousness, then there's light. What? In the beginning was created what? Light. The first thing that consciousness creates is light, and then light slows down. Thank you, Einstein. Light energy can become matter. So we really are pieces of energy, and but our consciousness is in charge, so we can decide that, ah, this is lust sex, and this is what I was talking about, you know, the Madonna whore complex. This is my wife, she's a good woman, and here's the, the, you know, the prostitutes that I have sex in my fantasies with. So we divide it in our consciousness. Or the woman does the same thing in, you know, more subtle ways sometimes. Uh, Well, of course, I mean, there's sex without love, there's sex without lust, there's, there's lust without love, there's lust without sex. I mean, no wonder we're all screwed up. But yeah. but there clearly are, I mean, barriers there if, you know, we're talking about the mind-blowing uh, sex in your book. Yes. Free, liberating, you know, th- so those are, are, are totally different things. Yes, I was going to say, a lot of us are familiar with revenge sex or rage sex. There's lots of rage sex or rebellion sex, which means I hate my daddy, he treated me like crap, I'm going to, you know, sneak out with a guy on the Harley in the middle of the night. Uh, that's rebellion sex, which if you do it, and often people who do this aren't aware of it, but it's so obvious when someone, oh, you hurt me, so I'm going to go out and have sex with someone else. You know? Yeah, hold that thought. We'll pick this up. Uh, revenge sex and all other uh, types uh, without love and lust and the spiritual high. Uh, we're going to be right back with Tobias Lars on Truth Brigade Radio. Tobias Lars, author of Listening to the Sun. And if you really want to hear it like it is, you have to get that book now. Courseofawakening.com is the website. Uh, Tobias, we do actually have a caller on the line. i, I got to try to to not be selfish here. <laughs> mm-hmm. And uh, one of our, our favorite callers, uh, Russ, how you doing tonight? <laughs> Good evening, Chris. <laughs> um, Doing well, doing well, and thank you, um, Tobias. Again, awesome. Hey, I got a I got a time old question for you, sir. Is it greater to love or to be loved? Both. In my opinion, yes, both. 
if there is a beginning with your birth of love, of wanting to give, but then if there is no one to receive, the Japan, then if there's no one to receive, then where can you give your love? 